you know, look, one of the things I come across regularly is business owners who perhaps had been successful at one point in time, but they've been in it a long time or something's happened like the global pandemic, like Brexit, like the economic uh, crisis that we're kind of moving through at the moment. And all of these factors, whether it's disappointment, whether it's disillusionment, whether it's even disappointment and perhaps even let's say that use that word failure. How do you get your mojo back if you have been through those things? How do we regain and rekindle that passion and drive? There's no single answer to that. I think you're losing your mojo, as, a pen, as you just said, is dependent on a number of things. I'm going to give you a quote from Winston Churchill. It's just timely. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. So an example that you've just given, what makes you tick? What, is there a different side of you that has not been tapped into? And that, there are settings where a coach could come into or a mentor could come in but you might have family and friends or a team that will just say to you, so Steve, what else can we do? Where else can we actually make an impact? Where else can we drive or put our business that no other person has done? It's about taking courage to do something slightly different or better to what you've done before. And that comes from whatever you, how you built up your resilience, the knowledge and the learning that you have. And dare I say it, the catalyst for that moment in time. Because your business might have gone kaput for whatever reason, but all of a sudden something just stimulates you, that just makes you think, and then you say to yourself, do you know what, I've done it before, I can do it again. All I need now is to build myself and a team to deliver that. And I think the self-evaluation process is such a key point to this, isn't it? You know, if we experience any failure in our life, it's always a way of evaluating what the key learnings are that we can take from that and then deploy that into our future self. And so that we're constantly growing in our self-learning and in the development of our culture and our aspirations. And I think sometimes it goes back to goals. And I know many people that will be listening to the podcast today perhaps just don't have a big enough goal for their business and perhaps it was to be self-employed and and then maybe it was uh, that I'm now self-employed actually I've realized I'm doing everything I need to leverage the power of a partnership and then ultimately to the point where we see our business as an investment so an opportunity that could potentially either be passed on as legacy for the next generation or could be sold do you think you could speak into this whole area of building business assets because I know most of our entrepreneurs that will be listening to this they'll want to be doing something tangible with their business and coming out of the global pandemic there seems to be so much uh, so many challenges but also so many opportunities where the market is really rich with uh, opportunities to sell to pivot and to thrive can you give any advice to us about how we can position ourselves for that growth or potential sale simple learning research what what, what are you looking into what, what what are you doing at the moment that you think you could be looked doing in a different way a number of the businesses that exist and grow are looking at who else is doing that? Take the, the Amazons of this world, or dare I say the Facebooks of this world, or, our, or a local, or, or local um, community business center. They will say to themselves, we do this. But if you look down the road, they do this in a slightly different way. But if we can adapt to it or take something on board or create a collaboration, better still, then we can move forward. So when I spoke earlier, it's about looking at what you do, some of your competitors or colleagues do, and working out whether you can take that on board and do it better, or you can create a partnership for it to be moved forward as a more viable asset. Because sometimes you need to, you have to think about biting a bullet. It may well be that what you're doing has hit a roadblock, that somebody else could take it further to leave you with space and time to do something else to find a courage and commitment to probably do or try something else. So for me, for any person who's looking at building up their assets, always look to the future. What is around the corner? What possibly could you be doing that is not being done today that you're thinking about doing moving forward? Classic example, um, hopefully on board a client who's in the educational space and they've come up with a software piece which enables teachers and pupils to better monitor their progress. Great asset. But where else could that be taken to? Anywhere that needs to measure performance, anywhere that needs to monitor performance is a space where that particular software, I'm not an, I'm not an IT person, but I suppose Upton played around with, 
could take it to that market. And that's what you need to think about. Where can you take your product or service to different markets? Not just here, not just on in a real life platform, take a digital, take it to other countries, et cetera, et cetera. But you do need to do your research. You do need to look at the comparisons. You do need to see whether your business is comparable, better or not than what you're comparing yourself to.